is uh, John has mellowed out a bit. He's a captain on the force. Uh, he doesn't like taking those wa wild chances that uh, Ponch used to drag him into. And then Ponch comes back after 15 years and joins the force again, Opie. And now John is his partner again, and he's he's ha finding himself uh, taking chances again. <laughs> uh, uh, High-speed chases, explosions. <laughs> Now, in the old days when it was Ponch and John, that was fine. Sure. But not now. John has a family, for God's sake. <laughs> he has responsibilities. Ponch. <laughs> so there was a little altercation in the locker room. Yeah. Nothing, though, compared to the... <laughs> I'm sorry, wait. <laughs> Just give me a second, please. <laughs> Nothing compared to the touching moment spent in the garage with Ponch and John. Yeah. When Ponch tells John... <laughs> Tells, sorry, John, about the death of his wife, and introduces him to little Frank Pontarello Jr. <laughs> oh, it's so touching. Oh, I missed it all. Tears welling up. Yes, I grabbed my wife and held her so tight, Opie. <laughs> I can't go on. Could you just finish the break, please, Obi? Now, did you at least tape this so I can borrow it and check it out for myself? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's on tape. You can see it, too. Wow. Oh, Titanic schmitanic, Obi. <laughs> I, was, I was welled up. Punch and John together, okay? <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you for filling me in, Anthony. God, that had to be the worst movie I ever saw in my life. I was too busy looking at Tyra Banks' uh, boobs during the VH1 Fashion Awards last night. Oh, good. You get to watch the good stuff, and I have to research for the show. <laughs> right. Great, thanks. I was researching. Did you tape that? We'll trade tapes. Do we need to, to tape the VH1 Music Awards? They'll show it uh, 20 times in the next week. Like TNT won't show the Ponch and John Chips reunion? As a matter of fact, as it ended and they're rolling the credits... They uh, go to a split screen. Mm -hmm. On the other half of the split screen is TNT going, Coming up next, an encore performance of Chips 98. <laughs> I'm like, encore? I, I, don't, I don't see the lighters and, and stomping feet for this encore. <laughs> I don't think this deserves an encore. Oh, it was so good they had to run it again, huh? Back to back, my right. friend. Very good. Well, we're ready to rock for this lovely Wednesday afternoon. Wow. Uh, fax line 212-957-WNEW. The phones were ringing like crazy, but Anthony was very emotional there. We couldn't go to the phone, so if you were trying to get a hold of us, please call back. 212-757-1027. On the way, the latest from Hull, and we'll do some Aerosmith next. Ah, son of a... What happened? Wrong CD in the wrong CD oh, case. So now, God. now I got to walk all the way over here and find the right CD. Just <laughs> walking to the wall of CDs at NAW. Whose responsibility uh, was that to get the right CD? Uh, uh oh, here comes uh, Max. No, this is great. This is professional radio at its best. Okay, I got the right CD. All right, now I gotta find out what track we were supposed to play. I never know whose fault this is. We gotta find some blame. It wasn't our fault this time. Wrong CD in the wrong CD case. Because we get blamed for a lot of things. In a way, she had kind of this cute hippie chick thing going. You know, sort of like a bohemian thing. Mm -hmm. But then when the clothes came off, it wrecked the Ooh, whole image. She's shaped like a pear. Yeah, she's a little wider around the hips than I, I, I had thought. And they had to use a lot of cubes to cube out the <laughs> private area. What the heck is going on down there? No, no it's just, it was just scary. Hey, Linus, what, what's that down there? <laughs> <laughs> she's got Chewbacca in a leg lock. <laughs> uh, I, I just don't get it. Maybe someone should explain that video to us today. Uh, I don't need an explanation. No, we really don't care, actually. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to see it when I first heard about it, and then I did, and I was kind of disappointed. Yeah, that's it. She should have went the distance and had, you know, her hair was covering most of her body. I guess that is a good thing. <laughs> she looked like Cousin Ed, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, good. A lot of participation today on the show. Yes. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Opie and Anthony hanging with you. And let's take a look at the front page of the Daily News. Let's see what the city is talking about today, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, Daily News. A bang-up year. 
Cabs killed 28 and injured, whoa, 22,000 people in New York last year. All right. Right on. So, wait, let's do the math real fast. So, seven people a day about are injured by a cab here in New York. Oh. And our stupid mayor is uh, worried about effing Thanksgiving balloons. <laughs> That's true. The mayor is now all freaked out about the uh, Thanksgiving parade balloons. Yes. So let's see. How many people died last year from the Thanksgiving balloons? None. It wasn't one? She didn't die. No, oh, she was injured. She was uh, severely injured. Okay. And she's learning how to talk again, Anthony. Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, Opie. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, start one. your equation over. Injured from uh, giant balloons? Yeah. One. One last year. Injured from cabs? 22,000. 22,000. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with our mayor? <laughs> well, He's going to take our balloons away from us. He's going to make them smaller and safer. I say we make the Thanksgiving Day balloons twice as big and fill them with hydrogen. <laughs> and let's shoot off fireworks around them. And shoot off fireworks around them and let's thin the herd a little bit. Now that'd be fun. Of course. My word, that many people get injured? 21,617 people in New York last year were injured by cabs. One person by a Thanksgiving Day balloon. Well, let's see. <laughs> let's let's go to the breakdowns. Okay. 352 uh, just got abrasions, Opie. Yeah. None of which uh, resulted in a death. Then we have contusions, which is, I think, an abrasion. No, cocoon. Yeah, okay. That's like a little deeper. Yeah. Fracture dislocations, 204. Mm hmm. Resulting in two deaths. Yes. Wow. Coming in with 46, it's burns. <laughs> resulting in one death. Uh, severe bleeding. Oof. 158. Resulting in eight, eight deaths. deaths. Topping the charts with eight deaths. <laughs> it's severe bleeding. <laughs> Minor bleeding, 950. Uh, wait a minute. Minor bleeding, bleeding. 950, 950 incidents. But it resulted in one death. One death. Shouldn't that be bumped into the severe bleeding category <laughs> since they died from it? It was severe to them. <laughs> That's a little weird. Internal injuries, 134, resulting in four deaths. Mm -hmm. Concussion, 169, one death. And, oh, amputation. <laughs> Jesus. Excuse me, miss, you forgot this in my cab. <laughs> My leg! <laughs> 29. 29, yes. Wow, you never think of that when you hop in those cabs. It's pretty scary out there. You always feel safer in the cab, though. But the mayor's more the concerned about our stupid Thanksgiving Day balloons. And he's taking away all the good ones. There will be no cat in the hat. There's no Bugs Bunny. Suffering succotash. Uh, he can knock down a building. He can topple on top of people. We can't have that. This is safe, fun city. <laughs> I've instructed my police force to step in, draw trajectory on any errant balloons, and open fire if they seem to be uh, endangering <laughs> the spectators. <laughs> Heaven's Chemurgatroid. You know, the mayor should go the distance and just have hand puppets this year. We're going with hand puppets and handheld balloons. <laughs> That's fun. My son Andrew loves them. <laughs> Look at the chubby little bastard. He's smiling like an idiot with the balloons and hand puppets. He's as big as the Thanksgiving Day balloons, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so, the balloons. Watch out for the balloons. Yeah, the mayor's now after Thanksgiving parade balloons. I'm glad he's got his priorities in order. Very good, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. All right, Watch on the way. Cabs. You know, on the way, we got some very cool, Anthony. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. That's the latest from the Black Crows. They are rocking hard. That's kicking my heart around off their CD by your side. I don't know the release date on the new Black Crows CD, but I do believe we still have probably a month before that's going to hit your record stores. But uh, for the first listen, I like that a lot. And we're going to try to get those boys in the imaginary ballroom. I think that would be very, very cool. Sounds good. It's open I like it. Today. Uh, I got to thank Jason from Union, New Jersey. He emailed me uh, a website address. It says if you're going, if you guys want to see some pics of the VH1 Fashion Awards, go to and he's got the website. They have pictures of, Ty of Tyra, Tyra Banks. I didn't I tell you night. that she looks so hot? She was packing some. 
And uh, that fine piece of ass, Jennifer Love Hewitt, mm -hmm. is also on this page. But screw that. I know she's your love, but uh, go to Tyra Banks. I am. That's what I'm doing right now. Is that a solid outfit she's got on? Oh, my God. <laughs> what is that? That's what I was watching on the VH1 Music Awards. And, and her co-presenter last night oh. couldn't, couldn't keep his eyes off her chest. Look at Earl. Look, Earl, is that hot or what? <laughs> Earl, is she a hot black lady? Oh my! <laughs> she'd yeah. be a Opie. Oh, she'd be a hot like blue lady. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here! I know. Look at that. If she was a triple. She would look hot. Wow. Those are those are merely huge. <laughs> and what she got an ace bandage around that? <laughs> it's like she's wearing an ace bandage around her her boobs. Unbelievable, actually. Okay. Uh, you could get there. Let the listeners in on the little website open. Yeah, because they got to see what I saw last night. All right. It's uh, www.scoopy, S-C-O-O-P-Y, scoopy, scoopy. Dot net. Okay. And then uh, slash daily, slash H-T-M. You get to it from the scoopy.net, though, I'm sure. So, scoopy. Tell us what you think of Tyra. Whew. There's right. another picture of her, too. That's just bizarre. This, this... Per person got the picture off the video of her being interviewed by Entertainment Tonight. Mm -hmm. oh, look at that. How did this guy maintain eye contact with her? <laughs> they're, just, they're just bulging out from that ace bandage she's wearing as a top. Uh, and there's Tyra. Excuse me, sir. You're, you're staring at the wrong eyes. What? <laughs> you're, you're staring at my other eye. <laughs> All right. Hey, yeah, we got Whoa. more Chips audio. Oh, we do? Yeah, what was the intense blood scene all about from last night's episode? Intense blood scene? No, about any, there's no blood in in chips. Do they have to like uh, run some blood to the hospital or something? There was an emergency. Oh, you're right. And and <laughs> was that a good scene? Is it worth playing or no? Oh, probably not. I don't think anything's worth playing from Chips. Well, you said earlier that you really enjoyed the Chips movie last night. I was lying. Oh, oh. Did you take sarcasm that I was getting all choked up at the reunion? But I, I thought you really liked it. <laughs> it was had to be the worst movie ever. Okay. I sat through it watching it like some people listen to our show, where where it's just like, I hate this. It's horrible. I can't believe I'm I'm watching this, but I'll continue. Yeah, that's how people think of uh, our show. Well, let's take a listen to Chips. Okay. Action-packed music. I'm here for the Typo RH negative blood. Headed for UCLA. I can't keep your blood just like that. There's all kinds of paperwork to sign. Paperwork? Time. There's no time for paperwork. My friend's a cop who had an on-duty accident. He needs that blood now. I can lose my <laughs> job for this. You're going to lose a lot more than your job. You didn't give me that blood. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> I'm the paperwork on this thing. Good. I'll sign whatever it is you want. Later. Thanks. Yeah. That's right. Hans pulled over an ambulance, uh, and then he gets he gets a helicopter to pull him out of the, the traffic jam <laughs> in a harness. That was some great acting. Why didn't you like the show last night? Hey, Anthony? you give it to me, or you're gonna have a problem. <laughs> what? You're gonna bite me with those big chiclet teeth you got? <laughs> then his teeth look like those big white chiclets that you you buy. Yeah. What are you going to do, sumo wrestle me if, <laughs> if I don't give you the blood? Draw out a ring and hit me with that gut. All right, very good. It was a touching, touching uh, episode. Obviously, Anthony. And I was corrected. It's Chips 99, not Chips 98. Oh. Why? I don't know. Perhaps TNT's running it nonstop until 1999. They're going to run it every day until 1999. Yeah. Oh, people uh, writing in on the instant feedback with their favorite Chips moments <laughs> from last night's Chips 99. One girl's writing, and uh, she couldn't stop laughing at the scene where Ponch was hanging from the helicopter with a cooler full of blood uh, en route to the hospital. A la Rambo? Yeah, he was actually in a harness that was connected to the helicopter, uh, just in midair. And he's talking to the pilot. Yeah, through his little headset. All right, get me to the hospital. He's swinging in the breeze over Los Angeles. It's hysterical. What a messed up show last night, huh? Blue 
one, Black, Kenny Wayne Shepherd on the Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. You're hanging with Opie and Anthony. Faxes rolling in here at 212-957-WNEW. This one reads, uh, you two kill me. I bet if it was the same chip show but starring Tyra Banks and Jennifer Love Hewitt, you would have loved it. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Don't be silly. You're just jealous because though Eric and Larry might be older and fatter, they're still better looking than both of you. Ooh, you got me. Ooh, 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 you got us. <laughs> We're not jealous. That was a mess last night. It's funny because a, a few of the ladies are coming out of the woodwork saying it was probably the worst uh, show in TV history last night. Could have been. But there are a lot of ladies calling up and saying, come on, man, that, was, that wasn't that bad. One woman called, John still looks good. <laughs> looks like my grandfather, you know? Yeah. I don't know. They, did, they really didn't need to make that show last night. Uh, guys, did you notice that the helicopter scene from Chips 99 was remarkably similar to the process in which you transport a beached whale? <laughs> Just an observation. <laughs> Were they trying to get punched to a sea world? <laughs> <laughs> Keep his blowhole wet! <laughs> well, I think we have another, um, touching moment from the Chips movie. Already in uh, set to go here, Anthony. You want to well, you want to set this one up for us because uh, I honestly did not see the movie. Yes. I was too busy watching the VH1 Fashion Awards last night. Yes, Sophie. Uh, it was a, a, a I, I would say a, a five Kleenex movie. I was uh, choked up a little last night with the the reunion between Ponch and John, the trials and tribulations, and this scene uh, which was just devastating. This was a hard scene to sit through. Heart wrenching. Yes, Obi. Yeah. Should I just play it, Anthony? It's yes, the scene where Ponch tells John about his wife. Ooh, okay. Well, you know how it is with wives. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Welling up. Frankie was two years old when Carol died. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was rough. I remember when you met her. What a mess. <laughs> I don't remember the guffaws and laughter through that uh, as I watched it last night, Opie. I think that was actually audio of you watching the <laughs> Chips movie last night, Anthony. That's what that was all about. What happened to the roller disco episode? That's what I liked. Honestly, if someone has that on tape, Anthony and I are looking for that. Please send it in. We'll give you an NEW prize package because we saw this a couple of years ago where I had to call Anthony and get him on the phone so we could goof on this episode together. This is a Chips episode to see. It's, it's Punch and John chasing a roving gang of bank robbers on roller skates. For some reason, remember back in the 70s, there was the big roller skating fad, you know, with those big, not the roller blades. I'm talking the big bulky wheeled yeah, roller what skates. Yeah, you talking about. And, uh... The the bank robbers had these skates in these big platform shoes, and they would rob the bank, push this button on the heel, and the wheels would pop down, and they'd skate away for their escape. Like, why not just use an escape car? And, but then the boys for this week's episode had to chase them on roller skates as well. Yeah. They couldn't chase them on foot. They had to, yeah. they had to chase them down on skates. It was this whole roller skating episode thing. Because then, uh, toward the end of the episode, they were trying to get all money together for this big benefit where uh, they were going to have a roller party, mm -hmm. roller disco party, uh, a celebrity one, star-studded. And it just so happened that every star that they got was a star that was on the same network Chips was on that year. So it was like, you know, hey, here's the MC at the disco party. And now, making his way onto the roller floor, let's give a big hand. Eight is enough, Dick Van Patten. <laughs> Dick Van Patten, everyone. And they show him, like, trying to skate. Yeah, he's, he's got a horrible skater. A couple of girls trying to hold him up. Yeah. Hey, and now coming out on his roller skates, oh, it's Grizzly Adams, Dan Haggerty. <laughs> let's give a big hand to Dan Haggerty. <laughs> That camp from Battle of the Network Stars. Yeah, they just introduced them one by one. Oh. It's Robert Conrad. <laughs> Happy Boyington. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. 
I want to see that again, desperately. We need to find a copy of that. There was that, and then my other favorite was Poncha's singing debut. Yes. When he sang Celebration. <laughs> We're going to have a good time tonight. Let's celebrate. It's all right. And he had this big disco suit on and everything. Oh. He looked like a pimp. He did. He looked like Huggy Bear. Huggy Bear, yeah. I ain't coming out on it. <laughs> I am on with the whole thing that's Huggy Bear. Antonio Fargas. Was that his name? Some... Antonio Fargas. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we know a little too much about chips, don't we? Unfortunately, we do. Welcome to the show. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, the latest from Kiss Psycho Circus. It's Opie and Anthony. And we're getting a lot of people emailing and faxing. Yeah. They're convinced we are behind the human fly. No. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> we couldn't possibly uh, be behind something so illegal. Something as legal as this. As illegal. Well, no, why? Because last week we were given REM tickets away. Mm -hmm. And a guy said he would uh, base jump off the George Washington Bridge for the REM tickets. Yeah. So a lot of people are making the connection that we might be behind this guy. Whoever he is, I want to give him a, a big, huge thumbs up. He's I don't know what's ballsier, first of all. The, the jump that he did off of the Chrysler building. Mm-hmm. Or climbing down a fire hose out the window to yeah. the eagle head. Did you read what he had to do to get to the eagle head? Yeah. He took what, like a fire hose that he saw in the hallway? Yeah. And he scampered, uh, what, down four flights? Yeah. To the eagle's head. <laughs> that is scary. Well, he had a parachute. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is he, like, he ripped his hands and burned them really bad because he just started sliding really oh. fast. Yeah. Ow. We've all done that before. In gym class, yeah, they tell you not to slide. Down, down the road. Slip, hand over hand, all the way down. Don't slide. But an amazing jump, and he got away again, which is very cool, I think. That's something, how he fits the whole parachute underneath his uh, jacket or whatever it is, so it doesn't look like he's wearing a parachute. And you know how he got away? Cab. Jumped in a cab. <laughs> which is statistically a lot more dangerous than jumping off the Chrysler building. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Isn't that amazing? He could have got injured being in the, the cab and... You know? That'd be something. He jumps off, successful jump, four stories, out a window, down a fire hose, and jumps off the Chrysler building, hops in a cab, and gets killed. Yeah. Because the front page of the Daily News, they, they're they saying that cabs killed 28 last year and injured 21,617 people. So, <laughs> that's I something. I wonder if he's done jumping, Anthony. Hmm. You think he has another jump in him? I think so. I, I have a feeling it's going to be a bridge next time. You think? Oh yeah. What else could he jump off? Well, he wants to do the. Uh, he wants to do World the Trade Center. Yeah, the World Trade Center, but the security is really tough over there. Too tight. They don't have a sense of humor over, over at the World Trade Center anymore. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. I say I he know. goes. I think he would. I say he goes for a bridge. A bridge? Yeah. Wanna Which make... one? Uh, if I was a betting man. George Washington. He likes to stay dry, though. <laughs> True. Yeah. He wouldn't need a boat to help him get away. Yeah, or something. I think he could pull it off, though. GWB. GWB is my guess. What's yours? Oh, I'll say the GWB also. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but we really don't know who the guy is. No. Not at all. So. No, enough said. Okay. Uh, on the way, some David Bowie. You know, a lot of people are calling in for the, they call my name's Bill bit from last week. Where he was in the phone, Who? where he was in the phone booth. I was. <laughs> what you? I couldn't find my wallet. That's right. And you were calling for some help, and I had, was. And you had a tragic accident. Yes, please. Uh, we, we're probably going to play that call tomorrow because I think that's going to be the bit of the week. I'm okay now, though. Because <laughs> we're going to do bit of the week tomorrow because we got to start the evolution of rock on Friday. Who? <laughs> Forget it, Bill. But I think we have a uh, another little prank for Bill. We do. Don't you need a hearing aid, Bill? What? Don't you need a hearing aid? Fine, thank you. All right. We're going to call a hearing aid place for you, okay, Bill? Yes, I'll take it on rye. <laughs> Forget it. Anthony, MindSpring, we need to talk about that for a minute here real fast. Reliable, fast Internet service. I know there's a lot of people always looking for a new provider, and they should look at MindSpring. It's 1-888-MSPRING. Why should they look at MindSpring, Anthony? Well, uh, you ever on the net? 
you're looking for your Jennifer Love Hewitt pictures. Or your, Tyra Banks. Tyra Banks pictures. And uh, it's downloads like a curtain pulling down real slow. And you get the top of the head, then some eyebrows, and then it freezes on you. Mm -hmm. Then stops because you got a 28-8 connection. And you bought a computer for $3,000 with a 56K connection. And you can never get 56K. Right. What about MindSpring? MindSpring has fast, reliable 56K connections. Of course. They got free customer support 24 hours a day, seven days a week, toll free. So oh. if you're having a problem, here it is. They will take care of you. Hello, uh, A-hole uh, Internet Service. <laughs> yeah, A-hole Internet <laughs> Service. Um, I'm trying to download my Jennifer Love Hewitt pictures, and it's A-hole. <laughs> okay. Fast forward to Friday. Yeah, fast forward now to Friday afternoon. <laughs> All our operators at a -Hall Internet are currently busy. Please hold the line. Oh, I'm still looking at Jennifer Love Hewitt's forehead. <laughs> I got the Vaseline out. Everything's ready. But I can't get the picture. No. So they have excellent service and support, of course. MindSpring, yeah. 1-888-M-SPRING. And this is really cool, too. If you tell them Opie and Anthony sent you, MindSpring will waive the $25 startup fee and give you the first 30 days of service free from the day you sign up. So call MindSpring today, 1-888-M-SPRING. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York, on the way the Talking Heads and Eve Six doing Inside Out. It's Opie, and they call my name's Bill is in the studio. Thank you, please. I don't know where Anthony went, but uh, they call my name's Bill. Hi, thank you, please. You're they call my name's Bill. You're uh, the latest celebrity on our show, Bill. You're becoming, you're becoming very famous. People enjoyed your little phone call to the Alzheimer's Clinic last week. I called them. Um, yeah. I can't seem to recall. <laughs> oh, great. I'm on, I ride a little rascal. Yeah, I see your little rascal. Could you, you know, I could get around and shop on my little rascal. Could you beep your little horn for everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Out of the way. Old Bill's coming through with his little rascal. Godspeed, John Glenn. Now, Bill, why are you... I was supposed to go on this shuttle. Uh, you were. I was going to be the oldest American. Yeah. But my sack was too low. <laughs> I missed the sack quota. <laughs> I stepped on my own sack, and they said no. Oh, that's too bad. And in the heat of space, it sticks to my leg like a fruit roll-up. <laughs> Makes that <laughs> sound when I peel it off. Can you, can you make it look like a bat? I, <laughs> I could stretch it out and put a flashlight behind it and see my blood flow. Thank you, please, which ain't too snappy these days. Now, they call my name's Bill. I got a question for you. Yes, please. It's another very cloudy day here in New York, and it's dark. Yes. So why the wraparound sunglasses, the Terminator sunglasses that you seem to always wear? I put these on after my cataract surgery because the sun hurts my retina. Oh, I see. And then I seem to have forgot I had them on for the past ten years. <laughs> Oops. And why do you have your pants pulled up to your nipples? This is my look. <laughs> okay. It's not up to my nipples, is it? It's pretty close. If I had a, a ruler, it'd be very close. This the is the only place my belt will hold on to. I see. I lost my hips back in 52. During the war? No, just age. Oh, okay. You know how that works? <laughs> See, your grandpa, all of a sudden, it's like, hey, where did grandpa's ass go? <laughs> it's all flat in his green golf pants. <laughs> and they pulled a belt real tight. And it just doesn't seem to hold the pants up. Well, so I got to pull them way up tight. Well, I see that, but uh, you pulled them up too high because we could see your white tube socks that are pulled up to your knees. Oh, oh boy, they sure did get short. <laughs> they sure did. What happened? I don't know. Do the ladies like that look, Bill? Oh, the girls at the home love it. Okay. They always say, hey, George, where's my grandson? <laughs> And I'm not George, and I don't know where the grandson is, so I can't help them. All right, so now why are you in the studio today? You, you obviously need my help. What can I do for you? Huh? What can I do for you? Huh? What can I do for you? They call my name's Bill. Oh, I need a hearing aid. You need a hearing aid. Yes, please. That's why you want me to call this number here? I got a number for you. Okay, I'm dialing you up the phone. Call and I need what? I'm dialing up the phone so you can talk to the hearing lady. Hearing aid lady, okay? What? The hearing aid lady should be answering the phone any second here. Are you, you please? Are you ready to talk to her, Bill? Who? Ah. Uh. They're hearing me. I help you. Hi, they call my name's Bill. I have a hearing problem. Yes. I need a hearing aid. All right. Uh, may I send you some consumer information about that? 
What? I would be happy to send you consumer information about buying a hearing aid. What was that, Missy? I would be happy to send you a brochure on hearing aids. They call my name's Bill. We don't sell hearing aids here. What was that? We do not sell hearing aids here. What? I can send you information about a hearing aid you may want to purchase. One more time, what? All right. I can send you information about a hearing aid you may want to purchase. What? <laughs> can I have your address? They call my name's Bill. I'm in the home. How can I help you, Bill? What? How can I help you, Bill? I need a hearing aid. We do not sell hearing aids, Bill. What? We do not sell hearing aids. Don't yell at me, Missy. <laughs> no, no, I, I wouldn't think of it. I need information. I understand that. What? <laughs> they call my name's Bill. Yes, I understand that, Bill. I got a little rascal. A little rascal, huh? What? And you got a last name, Bill? Let me look at my license. Wait a minute. Sure. 85 and still driving, toots. <laughs> okay. What does your license say your last name is, Bill? Wisnowski. Well, would you spell that, please? Wisnowski. Bill Wisnowski. I understand. Would you spell Wisnowski for me, Bill? It's spelled like it sounds, lady. W-H? W-I-Z, like in whiz. Okay. N-O-W, like in now. And ski, like in what you do on the snow. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'll see that you get the information. What? I will see that you get the information. One more time. Um, one more time. From the top. What? I'll, <laughs> I'll see that you get the information. Thank you, please. All right. They call it's, my name Bill. Bill Wisnowski. I, Who? I got it. I got it. Who? <laughs> Hang in there. Bye bye. <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry. <laughs> oh God. Uh, rumor has it that um, John Glenn wasn't supposed to go into space tomorrow. But they really wanted Bob Hope. And I think we're going to hear from Bob Hope possibly next. Oh, we could be. Sure. Okay. <laughs> what? 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York with the Talking Heads, Life During Wartime. Collective Soul in there and Eve 6 2 inside out. It's Opie and Anthony. Don't forget the REM concerts tonight at midnight. You're going to injure your ears, man, with your phones that loud. I'm sorry. It's funny. You're like the kid with the stereo. With the, the headphones on, you go to talk with the headphones on. Anthony! <laughs> hey! It's like, it's quiet in here. All right, I'll turn down my headphone volume. Oh, however you're comfortable. Okay, there you go. And you go to bed at night, lay down in bed, and all you hear is... I do hear that. Tinnitus, do you have that? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I went to a doctor a few years ago. I do have uh, Pete Townsend disease. What? <laughs> <laughs> I need the hearing aid, not they call oh, yeah. my name's Bill. Bill. Everyone is calling for the Alzheimer bit. That will happen tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. Because that turned out to be a uh, bit of the week. Oh, bit. And uh, we're doing bit of the week tomorrow because Friday we start the evolution of rock. Yeah. The story of WNEW. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. Pulling out some uh, old clips I haven't heard mm -hmm. in a while. History. And we'll be playing 3,000 songs that made WNEW what it is today. How about that? I, I like the one promo. Where it talks about Allison Steele and us in the same breath. <laughs> oh, my God. People are just livid. They call our boss and say, that's sacrilege. It's like here, it's Allison Steele, the night bird. And then, hey, it's, it's F.U. Friday with Opie and Anthony. <laughs> People are calling up like, I... Hello? I want to speak to whoever's in charge over there. <laughs> Allison Steele in the same breath as those two jackasses is sacrilegious. And should not be on the station. You're horrible. Get rid of those two. Get over it. It's a piece of tape. That's what we deal with every day. I used to listen to Allison. Yes, we Everybody all Everybody in New York did. We all grew up listening to the station. Mm -hmm. So when we start the evolution of Rock Friday, it's going to be very interesting. People forgot over time. We should play some of the old clips of uh, Scott's 
and Elton. You know, people we did say already. We, people say we're out of control. Yeah. Oh my God, the Scott So Elton thing is classic. He did a lot of classic stuff hey, in the past. Drinking with Elton. Yeah. He drank with everyone actually. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, I, I've just been informed that Bob Hope isn't ready to come on the air yet. <laughs> no, he's not. I guess he was supposed to be the oldest man in space, not John Glenn, who's taking off tomorrow. Yeah. So I do believe we'll have Bob Hope on the radio in a few minutes here. Okay. Stand by for that. But I think we're going to take a trip down memory lane. What do you got? We've had hundreds and hundreds of requests for this little phone call that came in, uh, I think, the first week we were here. Oh, wow. This one. Yeah. The Carol Miller call. Yeah. We're, uh, when a, somebody was calling for Carol Miller, mm -hmm. and we kept transferring them to imaginary departments here at NEW. Yes. With the help of good friend Adam Ferrara. Yes. Who will be joining us, by the way. When? In uh, a couple of weeks. Oh, early cool. or early November, he'll be back in town. That'll be fun. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York. Tragically hip poets from Phantom Power and Dire Straits. Before that, you're hanging with Opie and Anthony. I hope hey. the ride home isn't too bad today. Well, tomorrow's the big day, Anthony. Tomorrow. He goes back in space 36 years later. He's 77 a, years old. He's an American hero, John Glenn. Everyone seems to be talking about it. You can't tune on, turn on the TV without hearing about John Glenn's uh, flight back into space. Yeah, the big story today was that he's uh, going up with Metamucil. Yeah. How cute. Well, that's the old help. codger. That's going to balance him out. That'll work. I think the liftoff alone will clean him out. <laughs> That'd work for me. That's got to be the best laxative ever. I'm gonna sit you on top of a few tons of fuel and light it. Yeah. Done. <laughs> I can't wait to see Walter Cronkite. Yeah, another old curmudgeon. Yeah. Getting into the scene. But now I was reading today that uh, they wanted to put Bob Hope in space. Is there any truth to this, Anthony? Uh, no, none at all. I didn't read that. Oh, <laughs> yes, Opie. <laughs> I saw the same story. I'm surprised I didn't hear it on anyone else's show. No, John Glenn will be the oldest man in space, but who knows? Maybe in a few months they'll send Bob Hope up into space. Ah. I wonder what that would sound like. Hey, I got to tell you, this is Bob. Where the hell's the Grim Reaper Hope? It's great to be here on the space shuttle. Hey, that payload six is big enough for Charo's ass, isn't it? <laughs> ah, how about that Brooke Shields? <laughs> hey, my eyes are bleeding. Hey, is that a sunset or blood on my corneas? <laughs> I, I can't tell. But I gotta tell you, hey, how about that zero gravity, huh? Hey, my ball sack's bouncing around like a hippity hop. <laughs> ah, it's like I got a pound of melted Turkish taffy in my underwear. <laughs> hey, John Glenn, pass the Viagra. I gotta take a leak. <laughs> Ah, can't even leak without Viagra. Ah, my prostate looks like the surface of the moon. Ouch. Hey, where's Susan Anton? <laughs> hey, me and Bing are making a new film, On the Road to the Cemetery. <laughs> ah. Hey, from the space shuttle live, I want to say hi to my wife for 70 years, Dolores. I don't want to say she's dry, but boy, that'd be a tough re-entry. <laughs> ah. She couldn't get wet in the rainforest. <laughs> ah. Hey, John, is that a black hole? I haven't seen a black hole since I showered with Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> ah. Hey, my eyes look like two flaming meteors. I don't want to say my eyes are shot, but ah, one time in Vegas, I went down on Sinatra's toupee. <laughs> I thought it was Dolores, my wife. Ah. Hey, what's this mission control? I'm still working on bowel control. <laughs> ah, my roids are hanging like tapestry. <laughs> ah. Hey, I gotta go, but you've been great on the space shuttle. Thank you. <sighs> Roger, Mission Control. Get, get me out of here. That's not an umbilical cord I'm using on the spacewalk. It's my bowels. <laughs> oh. So that's what it would sound like with Bob Hope in space, huh? What? What? I missed it. I was out of the room. Yeah, where were you, Anthony? You oh, just missed it. I, I had to use the lavatory. Oh, okay. On the way, we got some John Mellencamp. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Pearl Jam, Better Man, The Who, John Mellencamp in there. Your life is now from his latest CD. It's Opie and Anthony. Hello. We're just about calming down from the Bob Hope in space thing. It was uh, fascinating. Oh, it sure was, Anthony. We have uh, comedy from Bob. Gotta love when Bob stops by the show. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Just gotta remind people really fast here that uh, we got the REM concert tonight. Matt Devotee's on your radio at 7. And then at midnight, we got REM in concert. That's gonna be very, very cool. 
Anything else to say here? Um, no, I'm working on the, the computer, Opie. I'm yeah, sorry. What happened? I don't know. The network uh, screwed up on me for a while, but I'm back. Hmm. I'm back. Checking your instant feedback at WNEW.com. Yeah, because the phones went out, too. Or no one's listening to us. <laughs> oh, well, we didn't figure that option in. Maybe no one's just writing or calling us. You would think, broadcasting from NEW in the middle of the day, that the phone would ring more than once in the last two hours. Yeah. I'm getting a little nervous. Oh. Remember the first time we came here? Yeah. <laughs> we sat in on Carol's show the first day, right? Yeah. Phone rang once. Yeah, well, where we were from originally, the phones would ring like 12 lines for mm -hmm. four straight hours. Yeah. And we um, we came in here, and uh, we, we we go, so where where do the phones come in? And they go, oh, right here, this box right here. They they ring right there, that whole top row. I'm like, oh, right. so um, are the phones broken? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone got insulted. <laughs> so we don't want it to go back to that. No, because we're, we're making a we're, lot of calls. Yeah, we're making progress. Now they're ringing. There you go. Hi, NEW. Hello. Hello. NEW, turn your radio down, sir. Sorry about that. We got you live on the air. What do you got? Well, they said you, nobody's calling in, so I figured I'd call in. All right, this is good. <laughs> this is good. At least we know the phones are working yeah. at this point in time. I just was checking it out. Okay. How's the highway today? Um, I'm in Jersey. Looks pretty clear right now. Thanks. Your traffic station, WNEW. Yes, if there's any delays, please give us a call and we'll let everyone else know. All What's right? your name, sir? This is open. Oh, oh. oh we, had a, we, we had, had to cut him off. That, isn't that figure? Oh. You plunk a live phone down and what happens? See, it's not easy to talk without cursing. You try to go on the radio and, and not curse. you got to put yourself in that mindset that you're meeting your girlfriend's uh, parents for the first time. Put all your S's and F's away mm -hmm. for the day. If you're wondering what that guy said, he goes, I'm talking to Opie and Anthony. Holy. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for calling. Please drive through. <laughs> so I guess. Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Safe for this way. On the way, we got uh, U2's Sweetest Thing and some Aerosmith next. All right, Anthony, do you want to try the phones again or oh. or you think they they can't handle this? Those live calls, they uh, they freak out sometimes when we just pop them right down without giving them any pre-warning or anything. Well, now they're not ringing. Great. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. That's you 2 sweetest thing off the best of 1980 to 1990. It's Opie and Anthony. Why, why are you shaking your head over there, pal? Well, we're, there's one, uh, one listener that we haven't won over, hasn't over time had us grow on him. Just one? Well, one so far that's checked in again. The other ones have either left mm -hmm. or had us grow on them. But for some reason, uh, this guy, he still feels compelled to write. Has an excuse for listening, though. I am a very long-time NEW listener, and I've made it a point not to listen during the evening drive time. I did tune in tonight by accident. My finger hit the wrong preset, and I felt the need to tell you that you have no talent and don't belong in NEW. I've never rooted for someone to fail before, but you two have no talent and should go back to some little 5,000-watt radio station on Wrong Island. Go away. And it's from our pal, Opie. You might remember Mike Mendick. Mike Mendick. Remember Mr. Mendick? And we said... We made fun of his name, and that's why he hates us. I wasn't making fun of his name. You, you, you forgot. I was being sympathetic to the fact that he probably is harboring a lot of anger from his days at school with the name uh, Mendick. Think of a young boy, maybe fifth, sixth grade. Having to go through school every day, sitting there during roll, roll call, the teacher yells that she wants Mendick, <laughs> and you have to be the guy that stands up. Yeah. Mendick? I, I thought Opie was bad in, in school. That's got to be bad. What friends want to go, you know, hey, where are you going? Going to hang out with Mendick. <laughs> No, no young boy wants to to say that to his friends, so he probably had no friends. So he's got some uh, anger inside him. He's harboring anger. We we accept you, Mike Mendick. <laughs> Come to the dark side. <laughs> He'll get there. He by accident he hit the preset. I I also want to <laughs> say hi to all the people that um that like us now. Yeah, 
I'm talking to the people that actually hated us at first. I've seen those names pop up too, where it's like, and now oh, I like that. Uh, somewhere along the way, you guys have changed your opinion, and I really, really appreciate that for having the open mind to to let us grow on you. Stick it out. Stick it out. And we, we're going to acknowledge you guys today because we have been reading the email and the instant feedback and the faxes. It always starts with, I hated you guys at first, but... You're growing on me. But you're growing on me. And it, and it usually is a bit. Usually one of these uh, wacky things that we throw at you yeah. finally wins you over. And yeah. we, we just want to acknowledge you guys today. Thank you for, for having an open mind. Sticking it out. For sticking it we out. We like it. And Mike, Mike Mendick... We're still here. Yes. If you want us, if you, you hit that preset by accident, give it a try again. I, Something might tickle your fancy. I guarantee he just heard this whole rap, Anthony. Okay. Some people love to hate us and love to listen to us even though they hate us, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. Hey, can I play one of my telemarketer calls? Which one? I, <laughs> you are brutal. What? Uh, most people, when the telemarketer calls the house, you hang up. You just say, no thanks, blah, 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 hang up. Opie's taken to recording these things and abusing these people to no end. Well, what, uh, let me explain, though. I was polite at first, mm -hmm. but they call at the wrong time when you're eating dinner or showering, and you tell them you're busy, and they keep calling you over and over and over again. They don't get the hint. Yeah. So it got to the point where I was losing my mind, and the only way you know I could keep my sanity was to start taping them and having some fun with them. Mm -hmm. And they continue to call to this day. All right, Anthony, uh, the listeners finally liked one of my bits. <laughs> it's about time. Starting to feel a little insecure there. Everyone uh, don't calling worry. up laughing at your bits. and Don't worry, Opie. They finally liked one of mine. That's great. <laughs> feel a little better about myself now. This is really good. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for showing your support. Oh, oh my God. i got some comedic stylings as well. It's, it'll be okay. Very funny. Thank you. Rush on the Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. We're doing something very cool with Rush. It's the world premiere broadcast of Rush. Different stages only on WNEW. This is really neat because it's Rush recorded live over the last two tours. That's going to happen a week from today, right, Matt? Yes, sir. Because it's going to be on your show. A week from today at uh, 10, p 10 p.m. only on WNEW, The Rock of New York. And tonight, Matt Devote's got the REM concert at midnight. No, actually, you're out of here by Lisa's then. Got it. Yeah, at least we'll have it at midnight. Mm -hmm. So a lot's going on here at NEW. Well, Opie, you struck a nerve. Uh, people emailing us, they enjoyed your little telemarketer scam. They re they did, really? Yes. Oh, thank they you. did indeed enjoy it. That's really nice of you guys. Thanks a lot. And a couple of them asking if we had any more. I got... Enjoyed your last telemarketer... Uh, scam. I have dozens of them, actually. Yeah, he's got no life. <laughs> <laughs> he's got plenty of time to sit at home and harass uh, telemarketers. Well, do they harass us? Nope, not me. They've never harassed you. Caller ID. So? What does that do? I got a block on my phone. Oh, so they can't get through to you? Yeah, it's a real pain in the ass to call my house. <laughs> oh, man, I should look into that. I like to sleep. But then I can't have fun. The funny thing is, you can hear my morning voice in these calls. Yeah. Uh, Hello? Uh, I, I did like 20 bong hits last night, <laughs> and you're like the first phone call of the day. What do you want? Uh, I used to hate that when you try to call in sick to work, and you have the morning voice. Like I used to wake up late all the time, and I'd have to call my boss up and convince him that it was car trouble. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to get right on the phone because you wait any longer, and it's even worse. So I'd call up and say, Hello? Yeah, hello? Uh, hello? Yeah, I'm having a lot of trouble. Um, I could be able to get in for a while. Car trouble. Been up for hours. <laughs> Trying to fix it. It's like just morning voice. That's pretty good. That was hard. You didn't go with the fake sick voice then. No, because I'd used that too many times. You no, know it's sad when you're really sick and you do have to call in. Yeah. You feel guilty like they're not going to believe me. So you always overact your sick voice even if you um, are sick. Hello? Yeah, like you don't yeah. even have a sore throat, but you throw that in anyway. I, I stubbed my toe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I st <coughs> Yeah, it's like a blood blister. <laughs> oh, and emphysema. No, really, I really am sick, I swear. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we could end the show with another telemarketer call. Okay. Which one? Well, this one's a doozy. 